Now, in continuing with this particular teaching right here, unless this is from the Nostradamus video, and they're kind of speaking about some of the the climatic effects, such as here, the whole water and fire, and we already are getting a foretaste of these particular events. So this um, Nostradamus 2012 video is one that we would recommend you checking out, plus there's an earlier portion of it that has, um, I think, uh, Edgar, Edgar Casey, some of his, his um, predictions. And his predictions basically were rightly based on what both the Bible and prophecy says will come to pass. The difficult thing to really estimate is the whole matter of, of, of time, right? The whole matter of time. For example, with the present, um, the present year, the effects of the present year, like, for example, let's bring up the video one more time. And this video is 2012 Earth's equator after 40 degree pole shift. We call this the African, the African plate of the African plate. Right now, once again, this is America at a, at a, at a more southern. It's at a more southern. Remember, this is the North Pole here. It's at a more southern distance. Now, we're coming into a particular time of alignment where. We're, it's a doorway. We're entering through a doorway. This December 21st, uh, 2012, which in Ethiopic, as we touched on in the first part of this, is the 12th of Taxus. The year will be 7505. But that year is important, and the book of Adam and Eve and the lost books of the Bible both point out the Ethiopic date as well as what occurred that was the 360th year of Noah, of noah so it's important also that that correlation you know be computed now here once again is um africa remember we're showing africa the horn of africa because part of this is not really pictured and figured we're just seeing a close-up part so as it rotates we won't be able to see the horn but one thing we're seeing is that africa is shifting from a northeasterly to a more easter, a, a more northern, a more northern positioning. Now, this is curious as well as it's very interesting, as we pointed out before. The words uh, Semain and uh, Debub in Amharic mean north and south, respectively. But in the Gutas, Semain means south and Debub means north. So this means that the Ethiopic language it testifies to a time when the north and south poles were actually reversed of the present of the present um, arrangement or the present situation. But now, from the scientific research that has been done concerning this, and part of it is in one of the History Channel, um, Everything 2012, which highlights some of these main matters that here we're going into one particular feature of this. Now, here from a um, symbolic representation that was shown to us and, and, and we drafted and put together here, we see the sun right here rising in the east. We see an alignment with this six-pointed star and the Ethiopic Yah, which refers to the Jad or the Yad. You understand? The Yad. Notice Yad is a Hebrew or a flame letter. You understand? This is a flame letter, Yod or Yad in the Hebrew, it's Yemen in the Ethiopic, and it refers to symbolic, according to symbolic interpretation, the right hand or the right hand fist that is upraised, similar to the black power fist, is the Yemen of the fourth order, which will be Yah, as Yah, Yu, Yi, Yah, 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 Yo according to those seven Ethiopic harmonics. Now, here we see the sun. What we thought formerly was picturing the sun. It can also be the central primordial sun as well. And an alignment now with the so-called galactic center. Now, over here on this particular, this is a still shot of the video, what we see is 
the the, uh, the East Africa, the Horn of Africa, being shifted further to the north, as this represents it right here, and West Africa, West Africa now, you understand, in a southern, moving towards a southerly position. This is what is explaining what we are seeing in this particular video right here as we continue to play this particular video about the polar shift you see the red sea right up there the red sea almost moving into a position like the mediterranean and here we have it further and you see at this particular position right here it is curious it's interesting this is this is spain and southern you know southern europe but this is the spain region you can see how how now it's moved further further south, you understand, know, move further south, even the equator, you see where the equator would be, the, roughly the equator would be through this particular, at this particular point here. So, so this is a dramatic 40% shift, and we're saying that Rastafari, John Rastafari, that's Majesty's Christ, the Moshia, the knowledge of Christ has revealed this even to us. So it's significant that we have a couple of witnesses. Once again, to bring this into demonstration, we have the 12th of Pastor 7505, and this particular day, which is December 20, 21st, December 21st, 2012. We have that as a, as a witness. We have even the signs from Dendera, Dendera, when properly understood in connection with the Bible and the symbology of the Bible, um, we have this, this eight-spoked wheel, which really sim symbolizes the alignment of the earth, you know, the mundane cross, and the celestial cross, according to the solstices and equinoxes, so, in other words, the solar system, the earth aligned with the universe, or what we would call the heavens, this alignment of the heavens, which is significant, or the wheel within a wheel, is quite likely that this is connected with the vision that Ezekiel, that Ezekiel also had. Another um, kind of a demonstration of this right here, we have... The Horn of Africa, you understand, know, right here, but remember, there'll be a global shift right here. This is the pole star. This is the pole star. These are the seven, the Pleiades, the seven sisters. And all these are mentioned in the Bible as well. But the knowledge of it has been hidden from the majority of the unlettered um, people. But even the Vatican, they have their astronomers as well as others who have been studying these things for a large amount of time. So we're into very prophetic, a very prophetic time, a very prophetic season. And many will say, with these events coming to pass, what are we to do? I would say, watch and pray, or let's alot to nestle. Learn to raise your Christ consciousness. It's very, very important to raise your Christ consciousness and your walk in the light, in the spiritual, psychological, and the regeneration of the body, you understand, which is that glory, which is the last to be revealed, biblically, scripturally. So this says, let's alot to nestle, rise to prayer, you understand, rise to prayer, rise to Christ consciousness, repent, um, baptize oneself in the word and the meditation. Um, think differently. You know what I'm saying? Think differently. You know what I'm saying? Think, conform your thoughts to the, to the example of our Lord and Savior, our Master and Medicine, Jesus Christos. We're living in very dramatic times. And another important feature of this right here, seeing that we're looking at this um, this shifting, 40-degree shifting of Africa and the, the equator, let us understand that these things can happen in one day. If it happens in one day, we know the effects are going to be dramatic. The effects are going to be just like this scripture right here that we have in Isaiah. 
Isaiah chapter 24 and 1 that says, Badmam yadar gatal, yigalabat atmal, ba arswama yete kamadutin, yibetna. Behold, Adonai maketh, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And as we go forward, we see a total uh, disruption of so-called civil society with such a 40-degree shift happening in one day is, 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 is totally dramatic. I mean, the so-called world and the world system, even their contingency plans, more than not will fail because the destruction would be on such a level. Now, whether these effects happen over days, some say that it's most likely to happen over days, a period of days, earth so-called days. If there are not other signs like darkness, you understand global darkness, uh, uh, some sort of eclipse of the sun may also come to pass because the, the magnetic and the effects are going to be resonant with the consciousness of the inhabitants of the earth. So with all this um, evil, evil doing, with all this reprobate mind, with all this rebellion against the King of Kings and against the teachings and the testimony of Jesus Christos, with all these wars and rumors of wars and, 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 and the worshiping of mammon and materialism, and Satanism means that there would be a much more um, dramatic effect. These effects can also go on over years, which means that occasionally there will be certain natural uh, disasters. But with the interference of such things like harp, there's what they call a blowback. You know, saying as we read on, it says in the Hizbum in Dihu Kahenu. In the Baria Wim and Dihu Getau, in the Baria Yutum and Dihu Emabetwa, in the Mia Gazam and Dihu, Yemia Shetau, in the Abedari Wum and Dihu Tebedariu, in the Ida Asa Kefayu, in Dihu Ida Kefayu, Yehona. It says, and it shall be. As with the people, so with the priest. As with the, ma the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, that's charging of interest, so with the giver of usury to him. In other words, it's going to happen to everyone is going to be affected. You understand? Everyone is going to be affected by this. And such a dramatic equatorial equator shift, you understand, um, or what we call the Africa polar shift, where, where, where Ethiopia moves from the northeast position and more to a northern position, along with the other Teutonic plates, this can be very dramatic. And here in uh, Timbete Isaiah, the prophecy of Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 24 and 1, it says that Adonai maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down, which definitely points to a um, polaris or polarity shift. You understand? And scatter for broad the inhabitants there. Are. Verse 2 tells us that everybody is affected. By this, it's not going to be different for the priest and for the people. It's not going to be different for the master, for the servant, for the mistress, or the maid, or for the seller, or the buyer, or for the borrower, or for the lender, or for the giver of usury, or for the taker of usury. But verse 3 tells us very clearly that midr mefetatin tefetalech, fetamama tebela shalech, egziavihir yihin kala tenagro alena. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled and utterly ruined. Now, the land in this context 
is not just talking about a particular land, but in this context is speaking about the globe or the earth, that the earth is going to be emptied, shaken upside down where it's not going to be like it is right now. You understand? Utterly spoiled for Adonai, for Yahweh, Baruch Hu, has spoken this word. This word, this is not a word, just, it, it says that Yahweh, that the, that the Most High, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ, have spoken this. Then it says in verse 4 that, Midrim, Alek, Asetch, Rege, Fetchim, Alem, Adekamech, Rege, Fetchim, Ye, Midrim, Hizb, Talak, Ocha, Dekamu. It says, the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world, notice, alem dekamech. It's like the, the world, she is tired. The world is wearied. It says, the world languisheth and fadeth away. But here's the key thing. It says that the haughty people of the earth do languish. The haughty people, so it's saying that the world system you understand? It's going to be weary. It's, it's going to be overwhelmed. And that the great people, you understand, the great people, the people who regard themselves to be the great people of the earth, which no doubt is speaking to the world rulers and all the conspirators against the king of kings and his Christ, to Satana and her accomplices, that they are going to languish. They're going to be tired. They're going to be decama, decama, wearied out. It says right here that Midrim, Kamiyak Emetubata Betacha Regasalech His Higum Higum Telala Fewal Lena Sera Atunema Lowat Awalena Yzalalamunemak Al Kidana Fer Sawalena The earth also is defiled that the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, or under those who sit in the land, those who sit in the land, notice it's not saying people, and this is key thing because there's other beings that are at work in this whole grand so-called conspiracy against the King of Kings and against his Christ, against the true Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior. It says because they have what transgressed the laws, they have transgressed the laws, they have transgressed really, literally, Higun, his law, Talala Fawalna. And they've changed the ordinance, Sir Atunim Lawat Awalana. You hear them talking about now a new normal. This is a transgressing of the law, his law, even nature's law, and changing his ordinances. You understand? Know All these fake, the, the fake calendar and the fake time configuration. That we're living on under and here says that al Kidan and the eternal covenant Afar Sawalina. We say no doubt that is with a lot of the counterfeit Christianity and these counterfeit Bibles out there too. You understand? Which um trample upon the divinity of Christ as they have already trampled upon his image, his true black image. You understand? That's why it says in verse six, Sile Zi mar gem midrin tibelalech, but ar swama yetek emmet uta yik et alu, yik et alu. Silezi a midra soocha yik at alalu, tik eta soochim yik aralu. It says, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate are desolate but but we notice something else right here those who are in it you understand it devoured it eat them up but here says bar swam and in her yetek emetu those who sit or dwell in her yeket alu you understand they are punished as it says there's a punishment this could be the time of the vows you understand, when we look now into Revelation, these vows, and then it speaks about a, a great earthquake. This signifies that these effects will be more dramatic. You understand, in, 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 the, in the more peaceful resolution of, of alignment, these things will be more gradual. 
and will hit certain isolated places. In the more dramatic or punishing, as this scripture seems to forebode, that these effects will be dramatic, such as Revelation speaking about a great earthquake, which, which all the inhabitants of the earth will feel. You understand? And if you've been through an earthquake and if you felt it like we felt one up here on the east coast of New York recently, it's very interesting. Something more dramatic than that. Woyo, woyo. You understand what to woe. So it says, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt. The inhabitants of the earth are burnt. And few men left. And a, and a few men left. So now when we look at this some. Um, this symbol that was revealed to us some years ago. Let's bring that up again. The um, this symbol right here, and this uh, presentation, and then we look at the flame letter. You understand the flame letter? Put this a little bit more so you can hopefully see this a little bit better. The flame letter right here, the yod, and this is the Hebraic or Masoretic yod, and this is the Ethiopic ya right here. Now, when you look at this, it's almost like a, a, a hand, and it's about the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is aligning, you understand, has created the heavens, and is aligning now. This whole um, galaxy and the whole solar system is coming into a certain alignment. Now, you see this picture of the sun, you understand, and the fire. Now, remember the cherubim of the Kirubel, the cherubim, you understand? And also the seraphim. If we look at the description, the seraphim, they deal with the fire. And we see that clearly in Ezekiel's book. And now we see this fire represented by the sun. You understand? And the sun is a, a symbol for the Father God. And we have this biblically, we have it scripturally, we have it even foreshadowed in ancient um, Egyptology as well. So this connection with where it says, therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt, or Bamarinya says, Silezi ye midr sawoch ye kat alalu, and says here, tik eat sawochim ye karalu. You understand? In other words, a few people, the, the Tirufan, or the survivors, it says, will be few. Now, it's interesting that the picture that Isaiah chapter 24 is painting for us as we now connecting the first verse with a shaking up of the earth, the earth turned upside down, and connecting that with the whole magnetic and the polar shift. And this particular representation in this particular video right here that we have used as a reference, especially most dramatic when we see the position of the USA. Now, what's not accounted for in this, what hasn't been accounted for in this particular presentation right here is how the water tables and certain land masses will come up, some land masses will go down, like there's a new island that is emerging in the Red Sea, a new island emerging in the Red Sea between Yemen, notice Yemen, same Yemen, which means right hand, and northern Ethiopia called Eritrea, Etera. A new island is emerging now. So we see this dramatic shift right here. This is a very dramatic shift right here. In fact, you might not be able to really notice it at first, but this is Africa after a polar shift. Now, it's already known now even more so than 